morning children and all the viewers who are watching this Surya Pet Kambam Bioscience online class. I'm Kausuran Jum, working as TGT Science in TSMS Imam Pet Village, Surya Pet Mandalan District. Children, today I'm here to explain you the topic Asexual Reproduction in Plants, which is a part of chapter number six, that is a reproduction, the generating system. So yesterday, Upendra sir has started the lesson, that is chapter number six, and explained and have given the introduction about the chapter. Today, I'll explain you about the asexual reproduction in plants. So here, what are the objectives of this class? Let's have a glance on this slide. You can understand the term asexual reproduction and, can, and you can cite examples for asexual reproduction. You can analyze various modes of asexual reproduction and you can explain the importance of asexual mode of reproduction. And uh, you can appreciate the efforts of man in generating an organism with the desired qualities by the process called as parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy. Okay, so let's begin this session. So at first, I want to define you the term asexual reproduction. Generally, what is reproduction? Reproduction means giving birth to an offspring of the same species. Giving birth to an offspring with the same species or same species is called as reproduction. So reproduction is of different types. So I generally it is of two types. One is asexual reproduction and the second one is the sexual reproduction. So today I'll explain you what is asexual reproduction. And in further classes, the teachers will explain you what, are, what is sexual reproduction and uh, its importance. So first, let me tell you what is a sexual reproduction. The reproduction which involves a single parent and which does not need the involvement of sex cells or gametes is called as a sexual reproduction. Uh, in seventh standard, you have learned about reproduction. Uh, reproduction generally it requires both the parents that is the mother and father or both the sexes that is male and female so female releases the female sex cell male releases the male sex cell these sex cells can also be called as gametes so these will combine to form zygote and zygote further develops into embryo and finally an organism is formed this is how the sexual reproduction occurs but in this sexual mode of reproduction, there is no need of two parents. Only single parent is enough. Okay. And uh, it does not involve any sex cells. So they, if an organism is formed from a single parent without the involvement of sex cells, then such type of reproduction is called as a sexual reproduction. Okay. Now here, there are different modes of reproduction, repro modes in the sense types, in how many ways the asexual reproduction is possible, we will see now. So here the first is fission, second is budding, third, fragmentation, fourth, parthenogenesis, and the fifth is regeneration. Okay, there are totally five types are discussed in our syllabus. So first we will start with the fission. So what is the meaning of fission here? Fission in the sense division. Division, one organism dividing into two or many. It is called as division. Division in the sense what? An organism dividing into one or two or many or uh, many. It is called as division. So here the fission is a type of sexual reproduction which requires a single parent and does not need any uh, involvement of sex cells. So here, this fission is of two types. One is a binary fission and second is multiple fission. Binary fission and multiple fission. Binary, by, in the sense two. Fission means division. If a single organism divides, if a single organism divides or splits into two daughter cells, then this type of asexual reproduction is called as binary fission. 
Here, there is single parent involved, no need of uh, uh, production of or involvement of sex cells. So this type of uh, division of a single organism into two cells is called as binary fission. I hope you have understood. And let's move to multiple fission. Multiple means many. Fission means division. Dividing of single organism into number of uh, organisms. It is called as multiple fission. So here, where it is, an, uh, it is a cell in which the nucleus is there. First, the nucleus splits into multiple nuclei, and then it is then each nucleus is surrounded by some cytoplasm and a cell membrane. Then all will get released. So this here, so many cells are formed, so many organisms are formed. So this type of formation of many organisms from a single organism is called as multiple fission. So in both binary fission and multiple fission, uh, the, the examples are the similar, that is amoeba, paramecium, and bacteria. So the organisms, these organisms exhibit both, uh, both the types of binary fission and multiple fission. So here one question is displayed uh, on the screen, that is how do you think bacteria divide to form curd? In uh, yesterday's class, uh, sir has explained you how the curd is formed, isn't it? So generally curd is formed by the bacteria called as lactic acid bacteria. This lactic acid bacteria undergoes binary fission or multiple fission and it converts milk into curd. So here, uh, which division uh, do you think uh, the bacteria undergoes means bacteria generally it undergoes binary fission only. Multiple fission is seen mostly in the spores. Okay, so bacteria undergoes the binary fission to form the curd. Okay, children, I hope you have understood about the fission. So fission is a, a sexual mode of reproduction where a single organism divides itself into two or many organisms. Next, the second mode of sexual reproduction is the budding. So here, what is the meaning of bud? Uh, see here, this is an organism. On this organism, a small outgrowth. Outgrowth is seen. See, this, this is one organism. On this organism, a small outgrowth is seen, which is called as bud. So budding in the sense of the process of formation of new organism with the form by the help of forming of a bud. So here, uh, this is also a sexual mode because here there is a single organism which uh, gives out a small bulge on its body. Slowly, this bulge grows and enlarges. Finally, this uh, bulge, which is called as bud, detaches from the parent body and leads an individual life. So here, this exam, these exam, you are familiar with these examples. This is the hydra and this is the yeast. Yeast is a type of fungus, isn't it? So hydra, it is an aquatic animal. Uh, and uh, first there is a bulge appears on the body. Slowly the bulge grows in size and these type of thread-like structures called as tentacles are formed uh, on the bud. And uh, when the bud grows sufficiently in its size, it gets detached from the mother's body and it lives the individual life. If you observe here, here also single parent involvement is there. There is a no involvement, there are no involvement of sex cells. So this is definitely a sexual mode of reproduction. I hope you have understood uh, budding also. Next, we will move to the uh, next mode of uh, sexual reproduction that is fragmentation. What is the meaning of fragment? Fragment in the sense a piece. Okay, one single organism, if it is cut into several pieces, then each piece can be called as a fragment. So fragmentation means the process in which a single piece of an organism develops into a complete organism. Okay, in this process, what happens? A single piece of an organism develops into a complete organism. Uh, accidentally, uh, sometimes accidentally a single organism can break into several pieces. Then each piece will not die. Each piece will grow and will uh, develop into a new organism by, uh, uh, by uh, originating the lost part. 
so it is called as the so each organism develops into a new organism uh, with this process of developing of a new organism from a piece of an organism is called as a fragmentation here the example i have taken is a spirogyra spirogyra is nothing but it is a type of algae so spirogyra when accidentally it breaks what happens it turns into fragments so this spirogyra gyra has broken and converted into two fragments now these two fragments will not degenerate or will not die what happens uh, this fragment again uh, develops into a complete organism and this develops into a complete organism so this type of pro, uh, reproduction is called as fragmentation i hope you have understood what is fragmentation so till now we have learned about three sexual modes of reproduction the first is a binary fission or multiple fission that is fission and the second we have gone through is the budding and the third is the fragmentation and next we will move to the further slide that is parthenogenesis children this is the most important thing uh, uh, this is the new topic or new concept which you are going to learn in this class uh, and uh, coming to the binary fission and uh, what about the budding budding these are uh, you are familiar with these concepts in your previous classes isn't it but parthenogenesis is a new topic for you so kindly concentrate what is the meaning of parthenogenesis means it is a virgin birth virgin birth okay so actually parthenogenesis is derived from the greek word and uh, here what happens in the sense uh, a zygote is formed from the female gamete okay uh, generally male will be there female will be there uh, males give rise to male sex cell females give rise to female sex cells so when these two sex cells combine then here i have shown uh, when female sex cell combined with the male sex cell it forms a zygote isn't it and then zygote divide and redivide and forms an embryo and later this embryo turns into a complete organism this is what the sexual reproduction but parthenogenesis is different it is a sexual reproduction that means it needs involvement of only single parent okay so here which parent is involving in the sense here the female is involving so females develops the uh, female sex cell that is called as egg or ovum isn't it so when this egg or ovum changes into a complete organism this process is called as parthenogenesis that means here it is a virgin it has not combined with the sperm okay when it combines with the sperm then it is called as fertilization but here fertilization is not happening uh, here only single sex cell that is a female sex cell it is changing into a complete organism how it changes means uh, this female sex cell turns to zygote later zygote to zygote turns to embryo and finally the organism is formed but here there is no involvement of male sex cell only the female sex cell forms a zygote zygote turns into embryo and embryo changes into a complete organism so here there is no need of male gamete and there is no need of fertilization such a development of new organism or complete organism with just a single uh, organism that is the here the that is a female sex cell female gamete is changing into the complete organism this is called as a parthenogenesis means virgin birth parthenogenesis naturally occurs okay in nature it is seen in both plants and animals but it can be induced artificially induced in the sense what we can uh, make an egg we can make a sex cell to uh, convert into an offspring without the involvement of the uh, sperm so we can also make the female sex cell to develop into a complete organism this is called as induced induced means uh, uh, what can we say we can inspire we can uh, artificially we can do that so it can parthenogenesis is a process of a sexual reproduction which occurs both naturally and also artificially so here generally sexual reproduction in plants uh, leads to what fruits okay inside the fruits there will be the seeds this is a common thing what we observe 
but do we have fruits without seeds? Have you eaten such, such fruits? Yes, we have eaten, isn't it? Nowadays, we are getting, we, uh, some fruits are available in the market. That is the watermelon, grapes, apple, isn't it? So in those uh, uh, fruits, there are no seeds. Generally, eating uh, watermelon with the seeds is a uh, troublesome. We won't uh, enjoy the fruit properly, isn't it? Or removing those seeds and enjoying the pulp is difficult to us. If there are no seeds, only the pulp part is there, then we can enjoy it fully. So such type of watermelons are available in the market. How uh, the watermelons without seeds are able to uh, able to uh, available to us by what process in the sense it is the process which is similar to parthenogenesis that is called as a parthenocarpy okay carpy in the sense of ovary which is a female part in a flower parthenocarpy partheno in the sense asexual asexual uh, the, I mean uh, uh, the ovary in which the uh, pollen grain has not uh, met, the male sex cell has not met, that is called as a parthenocarpy. So by the process called as parthenocarpy, seedless fruits can be uh, developed. So both the parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy are uh, naturally occurring and also it can be, it can be induced. Generally parthenocarpy is induced and parthenogenesis occur naturally as well as uh, can be induced. Okay. Now see here, Parthenocarpy. These are the watermelons which naturally available uh, with the seeds. But we can convert or we can produce watermelons without seeds. So this production of seedless fru fruits is called as Parthenocarpy. So how this is possible? In the sense, it is possible by spraying of some phytohormones phyto in the sense plant hormones means the chemicals so some of the plant hormones are sprayed externally to the plant that those are gibberellins and some and some auxins also so when these hormones are sprayed on the plants these develops these give rise to the fruits without seeds so what is parthenocarpy the development of a fruit without prior fertilization that means without fertilization if the fruit is formed from the ovary, then it is called as parthenocarpy. Have you understood? Next, uh, we use parthenogenesis type of reproduction in growing of organisms of our choice with the desirable characters. See here, parthenogenesis, uh, if we want, uh, so, uh, generally when the reproduction occurs, two parents are involved and both the parents' sexes combine and an organism, the baby organism is formed with the two, uh, with both the characters of father and mother. Sometimes new characters are also formed, but we don't, if we don't want any new characters, if we want only single parent characters to be transferred to the offspring, then what is the choice we have means we can go for the parthenogenesis, but that means we need only single parent. We don't need other parent, isn't it? So if we are involving the single parent, then only the uh, genes of the single parent is transferred. That means then the uh, offspring will have as it is the characters of the single parent. So with the, we can grow an organism with the desired characters. So parthenogenesis is a you parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy both are useful uh, both are useful okay next uh, where we can find this parthenogenesis in animals generally naturally this parthenogenesis is seen in most of the insects uh, that is uh, bees wasps and uh, it is uh, mostly seen in uh, invertebrates and also vertebrates also in some of the uh, fishes and lizards, even the sharks to be found uh, to be reproduced with the help of this process. Uh, once uh, what happened, a dragon a lizard, a dragon lizard, it was uh, kept in a zoo and there was, it was a female dragon, uh, dragon lizard, it was kept in a zoo and there was no male there. Uh, it has laid six eggs. Uh, there the, all the people were 
uh, shocked how this uh, female dragon lizard is able to uh, give or uh, is able to lay six eggs when there when there is a, when there is no male then they have uh, uh, what can they what they did then the research was done on that and found that the parthenogenesis is the procedure where it is uh, that organism is the single organism is able to uh, undergo the uh, development of the zygote and finally it has laid those eggs and in some of the sharks is also seen the, in some sharks also this process was seen it uh, rarely it occurs in higher organisms in mammals parthenogenesis is not possible uh, many research, many experiments were performed uh, on mammals also on rabbits but it was not successful yet okay and here if you see this uh, uh, paragraph uh, normally fertilized ovum leads to a egg one when the ovum meets with the sperm it develops into an egg one that can be male or female finally the egg one is but when the unfertilized ovum when the unfertilized ovum it leads to the male if you see uh, in insects and wasps that is bees and wasps uh, when the ovum is not fertilized then the eggs which they lay from those eggs only the male bees comes out that is those are the drones but the females cannot be developed from the unfertilized ovum have you understood so parthenogenesis it is the virgin birth in this there is no involvement of the uh, male organism only the female sex cell converts into zygote and further a complete organism is formed which has all the characters similar to the mother that is the female one okay i hope you have understood what is parthenogenesis now we will move further to the fifth mode of asexual reproduction that is regeneration regeneration generation means to produce to originate re in the sense again okay uh, originating again origination of uh, uh, regeneration means again it can be originated so here uh you can see the picture of lizard uh here this uh, lizard when it lost its tail part after few days again it can regain its uh, lost part this will uh, this you might have heard from your elders or you might have experienced in your uh, daily life so how this is possible means that this procedure this uh, uh, retaining or regaining of the lost part is called as a regeneration when an organism is broken down into pieces these pieces will regain their lost part resulting in the formation of a complete organism so this type of reproduction of organisms is called as regeneration organisms when they are cut into pieces the piece uh, is will develop the lost part so this is called as regeneration this is similar to fragmentation okay fragmentation means what when an organism is split into pieces or cut into pieces each fragment each piece will again develop into a new organism that is called as fragmentation so regeneration and fragmentation both are similar isn't it just think over this later we will discuss next here are some uh, some more examples for regeneration this is a planaria that is a flat worm uh, when this flat worm is cut into pieces this each part will regain its lost part that means the head part is able to develop or uh, or its uh, body and here this middle part is able to develop its a head and also the lower part and this tail part is able to develop the upper part of the body so overall the complete organisms are formed complete organisms are formed from uh, these three pieces that means one organism has splitted into three organ three parts these three parts again has uh, developed into three new organisms so this is the example for the regeneration here also when hydra is cut into two parts that is the upper head part and the lower part 
again these uh, parts can able to regain the lost part so these are the best examples which shows the regeneration process uh, actually uh, the, these are the lower organisms but the in lizard it can able to retain its tail but not the head part you should remember that okay next now it is a think group children you have to think now you have to give your work give some work to your uh, brain here are regeneration and fragmentation similar how yes both are similar regeneration fragmentation both are similar but what is the difference in the sense uh, regeneration occur, can be occurred in the higher organisms also whereas fragmentation is seen in the only in the lower organisms okay and uh, which type of fission produce larger colonies in less period uh, we have discussed it in the first second uh, third slide that is uh, uh, what is fission how many types of fissions are there uh, so fission in the sense uh, division uh, it is of two types a uh, binary fission and multiple fission isn't it so which type of fission can produce more number of organisms so it can lead to more uh, more organisms which can make colonies in the sense it is definitely multiple fission isn't it so multiple fission in the sense at once so many organisms can be formed here third one which mode of sexual reproduction provides maximum scope of choice of desirable characters uh, till now we have seen the five different modes of sexual reproduction one is uh, binary fission second is budding third is fragmentation fourth parthenogenesis and the fifth is regeneration among all uh, five you know in all these five which has maximum scope of getting desirable characters i have said you in the earlier slide that is the parthenogenesis parthenogenesis is a mode of sexual reproduction where we can get an organism of our desirable character of uh, which can, we can produce an organism which has all the desirable characters which we want to induce in an organism okay so these are the uh, uh, answers for these questions children next it is the final thing now it is the evaluation part uh, here what is sexual asexual reproduction give an example sexual reproduction means what uh, development of an organism or giving birth to an organism by a single parent without the involvement of sex cells so what is the example here we can give the binary fission or regeneration or fragmentation any of the any of the modes as an as the example next second one define the term fission how many types of fissions are there are seen in living organisms explain with suitable suitable example fission in the sense division there are two types of fissions binary fission and multiple fission uh, here these are seen in amoeba bacterium uh, bacteria as well as paramecium okay uh, binary fission in the sense one or single organism gives rise to two organisms that means a single body is splits into two and multiple fission means from single organism we will get many organisms at once mostly the multiple fission is seen in the spores spores in the sense it can be of a spore of a, a protozoa it can be a spore of bacteria next write a short note on various modes of sexual reproduction with an example uh, there are five modes of sexual uh, there are five modes of sexual reproduction that is binary fission next uh, budding third uh, fragmentation fourth uh, regenerative parthenogenesis and the fifth one is regeneration and give one example for each okay next what is parthenogenesis how it is different from parthenocarpy parthenogenesis in the sense it is a virgin birth okay uh, it is the development of an organism from the unfertilized to ovum or from the unfertilized egg how it is different from parthenocarpy means parthenocarpy is seen only in plants whereas parthenogenesis is seen in both in plants and animals whereas parthenocarpy leads to the formation of seedless fruits okay next final the last question is write few lines about the importance of sexual mode of reproduction so what is the importance children uh, it has a great importance in the nature uh, because uh, 
reproduction is a is the basic thing which every organism required for the continuation of its generation isn't it so in multicellular organisms there is the scope of formation of sex cells whereas in single cell organisms like amoeba bacterium uh, sex cells cannot be formed then how it should get reproduced the only option it has is the asexual mode isn't it so it has a great importance if there is no asexual mode of reproduction most of the lower organisms cannot reproduce and those species get uh, what can we say vanished from this earth so it has a great importance and uh, when we wanted to develop an organism with the desired characters then the option we have is the asexual mode of reproduction so it has a great importance i hope you have understood today's class once go through the content given in your textbook and uh, try to answer these questions so in your own on your own and get it evaluated from your teachers okay meet you soon in the next topic in the next session with a new topic thank you